Okay, so now we're going to be continuing this video with actual um, cleansing of the canal. We went through in the previous video how we instrument it all the way through and determine our full length. And I should also mention on that one, when we're trying in the different cut of percha points, if you have one that you stick in and you can see on the x-ray that it's sticking out by a little bit too much, your choices are either advance up to the next size file and take another x-ray and see where it was, or you can look at the x-ray and you can see whether or not that little bit, you can maybe just take a scissors, snip the tip, and that usually will make that be a custom fit cone, if you will. If it came in too short, well, obviously you're going to either go back and re-instrument the length of that canal or just use the next size smaller gutter percha point. So either way, you want to be able to dial it in so that when it comes time to put the final one in place, you know for sure that it's going to work. Okay, so let's move on to the actual cleansing procedure of this of this canal system. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the series, um, there is no one way that seems to work. I've been to several different courses and several experts on the topic and endodontist and trade journals and different product reps, of course, they've got their own ways or uh, ideas behind how a, a system should be cleansed out. Again, I've developed my own recipe for how I do this, so take it for what it's worth and see if you would agree with it. Everything's cleaned out, everything's been physically instrumented, now it's time to chemically cleanse it. What I do is I go in with a canal cleaner, and it's made by Brassler, um, and we put that inside of each canal. I then take a product from Dentsply, uh, Tulsa Dental, um, it's, it's a Dentsply product called Endo Activator, and it's basically a, uh, a plastic filament that, that, that vibrates at, at sonic speeds and goes inside the canals, and we put it down, and we just stop short by about two millimeters or so, and just kind of go back and forth, up and down inside the canal, and the idea is, is that that sonic wave is supposed to help disrupt any bacterial cells that are in there, and maybe even help stream the, um, the irrigant into lateral canals, and, um, and just introduce air into the overall system, so if there's any anaerobic bacteria down there, it will help introduce oxygen to the system, and as we all know, anaerobic bacteria do not like oxygen, so it will help kill off any of those bacteria as well. So we use the canal cleaner, and I put the endo activator in for about oh, 20, 30 seconds per canal, and we're done with that, I will then rinse it with water, take sodium hypochlorite, again, introduce it into each one of the canals, and go back with the endo activator, and same thing, 20, 30 seconds per canal, again, irrigating and agitating the uh, solution inside each one of those canals. Finish that off by going back in with the safe sided needle with the um, um, sodium hypochlorite, wash that all out, take water, wash it out again, and then at that point we're finally ready to start drying the canals. And what's funny is that if you're instrumenting, if you notice one of the canals keeps bleeding on you, when you go through these steps, a lot of times this process helps stop the bleeding. However, there are times where the bleeding doesn't stop. So what I will use at that point is uh, 1 to 50,000 epinephrine-based um, lidocaine and put that inside of the canal and let it just set there for a couple minutes and then come back and, and rinse it with water and see if it stops. If it doesn't stop, I'm not going to obturate a weeping or a, a bleeding canal. I'll put calcium hydroxide inside the canal, send the patient home, and they'll come back in a week or two when everything's going to be dried out at that point, basically formed a clot. And then we can go and, and finish off the root canal. But let's assume that there is no bleeding, there is no seepage. Of course, if it's, uh, if it's infected, you're not going to cork it off anyways. You're not going to obturate. You're going to let that area have the infection resolve itself before you would finally obturate. Anyways, all right, so everything is cleaned. And, and we're rinsed out, we're now going to dry it. Again, everything has been sealed off with either a rubber dam or with a um, isolite. Dry it, dry off the entire field, and then start cleaning out the canals. And again, use paper points. And the paper points should match what you ended with. If you ended with a 35 here, you're gonna use 35 paper points. Same thing over here with number 30. And I in particular like to have the obturators as well as the, um, I mean, the gutter percha cones and the um, paper points that have the markings on them, the 18, 19, 20 markings. So when I put it down, in case this one, let's say, was a little bit long with the number 30 and I had to snip the tip, I don't want to put another 30 paper point in there that's long and start poking the tissue, causing it to start to bleeding. You know, it's kind of starting it to bleed again. So um, just make sure you have the right kind of purchase, I'm sorry, the right paper points that match up what's going to be the right size for that, that canal. Okay. Uh, so everything is dried, now we are ready to uh, obturate. And at this point, if we use a gutter percha point initially as a try and it looks like it's still fine, the tip is not been crinkled up at all or bent, we'll take an alcohol gauze and wipe it off. We don't want to have any debris on the side of it and put them off to the side so they're ready to go. 
Uh, but now it's time to put a sealer in there. And there's two different ways of introducing sealer into this canal system. The safest way is going to be to actually just coat the cone, or maybe even a paper point, and put it down and coat the interior walls of these canals, and then introduce the paper, I'm sorry, the, um, the final cone into position. Or you can actually take the sealing material and squirt it inside the canal. Now, that's what I typically do, is I squirt inside the canal, that way I can make sure it's completely in there. There's no bubbles um, in, the, in the system when I fill it. The only caveat to that is that you have to be safe about it. When you put that plastic tip in, again, just like with any other irrigant or any other solution you're introducing into the canal system, you cannot jam the tip in there and then squirt some through. What happens is, obviously, the material shoots out the apex and you get this big blob of sealer out at the root tip. So you don't want that. Instead, I put the tip in, if it, if it jams, I'm going to pull it back a little bit to make sure it's not, not in there jammed anymore. It's nice and loose. Squirt some of that sealer out real slow. Don't try to push it real hard. Real slow and make sure you just kind of see the, the canal space fill up. I'll then take the gutter percha point after everything's been filled. When I put it in, I don't just cram it into place. I put it in place, just kind of float it in there, and then I twist. Twist as I put it down. And the reason why I do that is I want to break up any air and... Um, any um, hydraulic pressure that might be building ahead of that point as I'm pushing into position. So I'll twist it into position and that just makes for a nice smooth transition of having the sealer displaced apically, I'm sorry, displaced coronally as you're putting in your gutter percha point. You don't want to have a bunch of sealer um, to shoot out the apex. So once that's all in, I will then take a scissor, snip the top, I will then wash off all the sealer that's in there and then I will take an electronic uh, a heated tip. I don't like using an open flame, getting a metal instrument, and heating it up to like a red hot poker and carrying that over to the patient's mouth and, and singeing off the excess gutta percha. Um, that's always made me nervous. I can just imagine what the patient's thinking if they're sitting there and there's this torch going off in the distance and they see this red hot poker coming at them. I'd much rather just use an electronic tip. And the, the system we use, we get from Parkell, it's relatively low cost. It's a few hundred dollars and it works just fantastic. Uh, what it does though is we go in with the tip, metal tip, activate the, um, the heat on it. It will then singe off the excess. That makes it real easy. There is one safety thing it should keep in mind. That tip that we put in, not just the very tip of it, but the entire length of that metal insert gets hot. So as a safety precaution, what we'll do is we'll put a 2x2 two two gauze on the opposing lip. So as we're putting it into place, that, that corner doesn't accidentally touch the lip and give the patient a small burn. They don't really care for that so much. So just if you're going to use that electronic tip, make sure you put a buffer on the other side, on the, on the contralateral side. I'm sorry, not contralateral, opposing side. Um, when you're putting that in there so you don't accidentally, while you're trying to look at the tip, you don't realize that the corner might be touching some other soft tissue. Um, but other than that, it's a fantastic product and, I, and we just like, like it just well because it does the job the way it's supposed to. Okay, so now we've got a perch and the gutta perch again. We like to have it sealed off either right here or maybe even a little bit inside there so that our buildup that we're soon going to be placing will be further locked into position. Well, one more thing with that electronic tip. You don't want to take the electronic tip and put it in there and try to like really work it down inside and make it some kind of like system B approach where you think you're going to thermoplasticize the, uh, the gutta percha. What can happen when I first got that, um, that electronic tip I had an extracted tooth and I obturated it and I was putting it in there. I was trying to do just that. I was holding onto the roots and I was working that uh, heated tip in there trying to see if I could get that gutta percha all the way down to say right here. And as I was holding on to that, that tooth, it got so hot that I almost had to drop it because it just heated up so much. So you can imagine if you put something really hot and you make all of this tissue really hot, um, that's not going to be very good for the periodontium around the roots. So. Be careful again, you might burn the opposing or you might overheat the tooth. The purpose of that electronic tip is to just go in and singe off the, uh, the excess so you don't have to go in there with some kind of rotary handpiece to do it. Because if you know if you go in with a diamond burr to remove the excess, you might spin that gutta percha point right back out of the canal. So anyways, hopefully that's been a helpful tidbit for you guys. I know it's really been great for us. Let's see, what else is there? I think that's about it. So when we're all done, we just put our build up and that's, and that's it. 
Oh, one more final thing. Um, some dentists like to place posts. I don't. I used to place them early on in my career, but I haven't placed a post in probably 12 years or so. I just don't like the idea of going in and taking this gutta percha that you've just put in and drilling even further inside this canal space. We've already enlarged it with a root canal. I don't like the idea of going in with that flat, um, very straight, rigid um, uh, post burr and trying to make it work inside this canal that might be a little bit curved. I think it takes off a little bit of too much uh, root structure. And I also wonder if that makes it at all weaker right there. And if the tooth is so broken down that you actually need um, an anchor to hold the bill up in place, then I wonder if the tooth was even worth saving to begin with. So um, to me, if it needed a, a post in order to save the tooth, in my opinion, that tooth may be too far gone and might be better just in the long run to have that tooth taken out. So I don't place posts. I, I think if you're relying upon that to hold it, there's something that might be more compromised in that tooth than it needs to be. I find that most of the time if I can just get the gutta percha down to about here and down to about here, that's enough to lock in right there, as well as you have all these side walls that you should be able to put your composite buildup in place. That's probably for another whole video, but I'll just mention for our buildups, we just use composite filling material. The regular stuff you're gonna to use to do class ones and class two fillings, that's what we use for our buildup. We don't use a special buildup product. I've just found the ones I've worked with in the past, they just don't seem to cut as well. It seems like you're cutting along with the enamel and you hit that buildup material and it just gives too easy. I like to have something more rigid and solid. So I'm gonna put, um, put a stronger composite material